guys, Charlie here from Funky Vapes, yet again with another funky review for all my funky friends. Today we're going to take a look at another Genesis Atomizer, this is the AGAT. You've seen me use it in most of my recent reviews, yet I haven't actually reviewed it, I thought I did, but alas, I have not. So I want to take a look at it, I'm pretty impressed overall, but we'll break it all down. I've been taking notes from a lot of my reviewer friends, and I've tried to make an outline of my reviews, so they're less sorry, frantic, and a little more formal, though I'm going to keep them pretty casual. So as an overview, what we have is an inexpensive Chinese Genesis atomizer. I hesitate to call it Chinese just because it's made in China, but anyways, it's, it's Chinese. It doesn't speak Chinese, but um, it's made of stainless steel, which is really cool. A lot of uh, the first runs had the, the center post running through the middle, it was chrome plated black uh, chrome plated brass but this one is certainly stainless steel so this whole thing is stainless steel no uh no chrome plating not like the dud um it's interesting it can be used as a genesis atomizer or silica wick and i've been really i'm pretty much done with silica other than my beautiful odysseus um so like i said i'm i'm done with silica for the most part but I just wanted to point out, you do get the necessary parts with it, including some silica wick and what appears to be the thinnest canthal in the universe. You get this little spare part kit with it, so you could just convert it to a Genesis or um, a silica wick atomizer. I'm not going to look at that because I don't really care to use it as such. But you also get a bunch of spare O-rings, a spare locking nut, which is cool. Uh, spare o-ring for the center post, spare insulator, and it's not a spare screw, it's actually a screw to use it as the genus or the uh, silica style. So what I like about this off the hop is that it's an original design, this isn't an issue of, you know, cloning or ripping off someone else's design. As far as I know, it's, it's pretty unique. I mean, it's as much of a clone as, like, any popular Genesis atomizer like the Bliss or Cobra, you could call those a clone of some Genesis idea, but that's ridiculous and I wouldn't do it. So this one is essentially its own design. We'll, uh, we'll move right into aesthetics actually because I like and hate the design. What I do like about it is it's very solid, very heavy feeling. It's got some heft to it. It's large. Um, there she is. It's a big boy. I'll try to find my... There's the dud. Did clone kind of thing. It's a really hefty device. Works out to be the exact same diameter as my Caravella, though. So about 22 millimeters. And when I say exact, I mean it's actually exact. Like, there's no... If you can run your thumb along it, there's no profile difference. So to me, that's a plus that it's this thick. But for some people, if you're using this on a Proveri or... Whatever you're going to use it on, and I, I really don't like using Genesis stuff on a Proveri. They're just too, there's too much monitoring going on, which is a good thing, but it just, it gets very finicky when you get shorts. So I like to use mechanical devices, and it happens to look fantastic on the Caravella. And I must say, it actually looks better on the GGTS, because the GGTS has this native knurling on the air control here. So provided you use it with the top cap, I'm going to just toss it on now while we're talking about aesthetics. I won't fire it up, but look what I've gone and done. Actually, I won't, but you can see the knurling is essentially the exact same knurling, and it ends up looking real sharp, I assure you. So if you wanted to use it on a GGTS, that would look fantastic. So the finish is great, the diameter is awesome, and we'll just talk about it really quick. The cost is just mind-boggling. For stainless steel, Genesis Atomizer, easy to use in service. It's, I haven't seen it much more than 30 bucks, which is very affordable in my opinion. I got this in a co-op, I think it was like $13. It's very, very affordable and performs great. The top cap here has a nice little, you know, embellishment, a little groove there. It fits drip tips marvelously, like, that's just a cheapo stainless steel Ming. Um, here's a, a plastic Mon style drip tip. Again, it, it fits most drip tips nice and snug. The only one that's a bit wishy-washy is this old stainless steel one I have here, and it kind of just pops in and out very easily. But that's the only one I've had issue with, and I've used a lot of different drip tips in here. 
So the dislikes, like I said, I hate the knurling. I think it looks awful on anything but a GGTS. So that being said, they're, they're coming out with new revisions of these. The AGA-S is coming out, and that one has no knurling, but it also doesn't have a clear window. It's mostly stainless steel. It looks really nice, but I like having a clear window so I can see how much juice I have and make sure the air hole's lined up. As well, there's the EGAW, but I guess it's not coming in North America. It has no knurling, and it's a pop-off top cap, which is neat, but it has a threaded tank. So, anyways, a lot of different uh, revisions coming out. So, I hear the revision 2 is coming out soon. That one's going to be a pop-top, no knurling, apparently. And I think that's the only major difference. So, in terms of the uh, the performance, I'm going to pop the, the hood here. That's the first thing we'll talk about. It is a screw top with an insulator, or um, an o-ring there. My air hole actually came nearly lined up, a lot closer than it is now. As you can see, it's off by a little bit. And I didn't realize, I normally sand it down to make it line up, but it was off the other way. So by sanding it, I actually put it off a little further. So it it's barely, barely any amount of turning to get it to line up perfectly. But that's the downfall with this, uh, this stuff coming out of China, is that the air holes just aren't lining up, and I don't understand what's so hard about machining the top caps, assembling them, and then drilling the air hole last to make it line up. I'm sure that's not what they're doing because it would line up great. Drives me nuts. But you can fix it. I guess I could sand this down even more, but then I'm going to lose a few uh, millimeters off this, and the air hole won't be... It'll be at the bottom of the coil rather than the top. And to me, that affects the vapor production. So I'd rather just turn it a little bit. So that is a, um, a dislike... But we'll switch this off for now. I'll tell you what I love about it. It's got huge uh, wick hole. The wick hole is gigantic. It's probably about 3 millimeter, which makes for a really thick wick. Really great for 500 mesh. You can make it hollow. You can make it thick. doesn't really matter. It's, it's thick enough that it'll just suck the juice right up. And in turn, it's got a huge fill hole. And I purposely didn't fill this yet because I wanted to show you how, how awesome this is. So I'm going to find some juice. One that doesn't have a filler tip on it. Why is me black and blue? I've got some... Sorry, I just pointed the camera down to the nuts. Um, there it is. So here's... Oh, it does have a, a proper cap. Sorry, I wasn't better prepared. But... Tasty juice. So what we'll do is... A standard uh, tip on a juice bottle you can actually line it up right on top and bam the tanks fill that quick without even using a syringe which is fantastic or even like a syringe tip so the huge air hole is great and again springboarding off of that those big holes mean big screws you get really big screws I don't use the fill screw ever I just keep it out I like it to it, find it wicks better and you can use a regular size screwdriver. This one's even a little bit too small, but you don't have to use those jeweler screwdrivers or a stupid Allen key. You can use a regular size screw, I assure you. It's a giant screw. So that is fantastic. I love the knurled nuts. I think that's probably my favorite way to use Genesis style stuff, just because you can control the height of your coil, where it ends, where it begins. You can make it go a little higher if you need to, a little bit lower if you happen to be using less wraps. So you have a lot of versatility in that. Um, again, too, I think the tanks are a great feature. I don't know if I have any right handy. I don't know where I put them. Oh, here they are. These tanks, you can get replacement tanks, and they're so thick, like extremely thick, probably almost three times as thick as like a Bliss tank or an Orion tank. They're made out of plastic. I don't know if it's polycarbonate or uh, polypropylene. I'm not sure, but they're very thick, and I've used fluid in them. I've used menthol juices, and I've used stuff with cinnamon in it. No cracks, but I have heard people are cracking them. I don't know if they're just tightening down too much and losing that structural integrity, but these are cheap. I think they're like 85 cents to a buck 29 maybe, and you can get a whole bunch of them. I got a few extras just in case, but I've had no problems with my primary one, and I find it doesn't leach additive flavors in it. You don't get, like, menthol sticking around or cinnamon, anything like that, which is awesome. So in terms of what else I don't like about the performance, it's not so much 
me, it's just general observations, I guess. Because the wick hole is so thick, well, first I'll just mention what it is. The, the wick is actually pretty far away from the post. If you can see, my wick's actually bent a little bit just to try to get it closer there. I find you get less uh, of a hot spot on your top uh, wrap there, the closer it is. And it's actually pretty close. It's probably about three, four millimeters away if you um, leave it straight up. So I've been bending it over a little bit, which isn't a big deal. It doesn't affect the wicking at all, really. It just um, it puts a little bit of strain on the wick. like It, it forces the coil to like, pull on it, so you get a little bit of indentation. So if you're using true capillary wicking, it might be a problem just because you're, you're collapsing that a bit, but you can run a syringe through it. The other thing I found, and it's going to be pretty much impossible to show you here without taking it completely apart, and I really don't want to, the, the center pin... Okay, it's uh, right now it's about flush, and fortunately I can just adjust it on my Caravella, which is good. But um, it's actually held down by a smaller knurled nut there, and then um, your silicone uh, insulator. And I find that because the silicone is there, you're not getting a soft, or you're getting a soft grounding with that nut, so it actually can push it up. So if you're putting it on the GGTS with like a floating center pin it pushes the connection in there. So if you try to use it on something else after that doesn't have an adjustable center pin like the GGTS or the Caravella, you're going to get some problems because now you have to undo that bottom nut and push the center pin down and relock it. You can actually do it without totally taking it apart, but it might push your uh, top coil down a little bit. Not a huge deal at all really, but just thought I'd point it out. You're gonna, every couple days I find it just naturally wiggles its way up as that bottom knurled nut comes unscrewed. But you can just make sure it's tightened. Like, see, I can probably turn this about three or four turns right now before, um, oh, yeah, we could turn this all day just because that silicone is so soft. Not a huge deal. I don't even know how they would resolve that from a design point um, because I like having the insulator in the center post. Uh, it's not that I like it. I think it's actually necessary. But in any case, so the top cap might not line up, and you got a far way to go between the post here, but if you're somewhat experienced, even a novice, you can pretty much troubleshoot your way through that. Um, they're just glowing up a little bit right there, but not too much of a big deal. The final thing is the air hole, and this is the great debate. It comes with a nice sized air hole. It's actually larger than the Phoenix or the Dud, but it wasn't large enough for me. It's larger than the Bliss, so you might actually be fine keeping it stock, and I might even edit in some, I don't know, I already deleted that video, but I've pretty much been using it at 1 16th. I drilled it out about a week ago, and I've loved it where it is. So that being said, we'll transition into a nice vape. Um, I'll just show you how fast this thing wicks. If it's tilted, it's pretty much ready to drop right on my keyboard. Uh, you can't see that because I'm an idiot. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much instant, and I have a really thick wick. Like I said, it's probably about 3 millimeters, maybe a little less, and there's still extra room in between just so it wicks faster when I tilt it. But here's a here's a vape on this. This is some 50-50 juice from Heather's Heavenly Vapes. So here we go. This is, of course, on the Caravella with the 18650, about half-charged battery. I got a, a 3 4 wrap going on this with 28 gauge canthal. Wicks great, tastes great, and really good vapor with the 116th air hole, to be uh, perfectly honest. No lack of vapor or flavor. The, the chamber itself is, is rather large on the inside, so it cools it down a bit, but it's also pretty short considering how large that wick is, so you do get really nice vapor out of it, and it's the perfect balance between warm and cool. I like very cool vapes myself, but for the time being, it's, it's performing great. The draw, therefore, isn't as airy as, say, um, the dud that I drilled out to 1 16th as well. I just find that it feels like there's no resistance. This stuff, there's actually enough things in here, like this tertiary little post that has nothing to do with the Genesis setup, that stifles and stiffens up the draw just a bit, as well as the big, huge center post, the big locking nuts, the big screw. It just takes up some space in the otherwise empty cap. 
I find the more space you put in there, the warmer the vape gets. It just doesn't have as much uh, airflow to cool down. So although the hole's big, the amount of air you can get in there is still, you know, it's finite, and it's uh, somewhat determined by the amount of stuff inside. So there's enough stuff to uh, keep it a nice, balanced, warm, and cool vape. There's no real need to tilt this. I just find that it's, I do it naturally now, but it's feeding pretty fantastic. It's neat because the wick actually ends up right alongside this uh, the tube because it's such a thick piece of uh, plastic here that it really sucks up all the juice. It's exposed to a long um, section. The, the tank actually doesn't stop at the knurling. It keeps going even deeper. So it's very deep, so you have a lot of length. I like a long wick. The length just, you know, you have more area to soak up juice, so I find it wicks just fine vertically, too. Fantastic. So there she is. That's how she vapes. I'm really impressed by this. As far as the cost is concerned, this is by far my favorite Genesis Atomizer, just between cost and performance. I do like the nicer stuff as well, but... This is getting the job done at a great price. Once the new ones without the knurling come out, or even the AGAS, which is out now, once those start hitting the market, I think those will be easily my favorite Genesis atomizers. It doesn't bother me they're from China. It makes me a little happy that they're not a clone. They're kind of like their own unique thing. But you can't go wrong with this, really. The only downfall, like I said, is that post is a little bit far away, but even with some high-end stuff, you get that. And the air hole might not line up. So hopefully China gets their shit together and figures that out. In the meantime, though, you can sand it if if um, it's off in the right direction. You can actually sand it no matter what. You're just going to lose a few millimeters in length. But it works fine. Absolutely no leaks. The O-rings are tight. These tanks aren't threaded, so you don't have to worry about that. They have pretty much infinite longevity. No real parts on here that are going to wear and tear over time so it's uh, one of the true benefits of a genesis atomizer in my opinion is just the longevity it should this one should in theory at least work forever stainless steel on stainless steel threads they're not gonna you know it's not aluminum or brass uh getting toothed by the the nice stainless steel so overall it's it's great in my opinion a couple more vapes on it Great clouds. As I said, this is a 50-50 juice, so. And I'm not taking particularly long uh, drags either, so. I think the vapor production's fantastic. On a freshly charged battery, these, uh, these suckers go. Actually, I have one here I can toss in there. Love the Caravello. The brass contacts with the freshly charged battery and the, the low resistance coil. It's about 0.8 ohms. It really uh, really pumps up the clouds. Oh yeah. So the big selling features to me are ease of fill. I don't like carrying syringe bottles around with me. I don't have to with this at all. I haven't found a single bottle that doesn't fit. I mean, it doesn't actually fit into the hole, but it's close enough that when you just put it up to it, like lip to hole, <laughs> lip to hole, when you put it lip to hole, it fills within, you know, probably a second and a half. If you give it a good squeeze, you can get away with one tough squeeze and she's filled right up. You can fill this right to the top. I know I didn't in the video just because I'm running out of juice and I might mentholate it. So that's the AGAT. It's a steal of a price. Uh, steel, stainless steel. A steal of a price for a stainless steel Genesis atomizer. I can't fault it in performance other than the air hole not lining up. But like I said, mine was pretty much right on. I'm just a perfectionist in that regard. And I ended up rushing it and realized that I would have to sand it even more to get it to go all the way around again, not even worth it for the little bit that it was off, and 
that's the difference of it right now. So I can even use it fully tightened down. No leaks, nothing coming out of the top cap. I will say though, if you invert this or lay it down, that fill hole is so big that it actually, at one point, I filled it up fresh, left the house and put it in my coat pocket. My coat's huge. And it was sitting like this for about five minutes before I actually got into my car. And all the juice came out. I'm like, where's the juice? I checked my pocket. There was no leaks. I'm like, where's the juice? Took the drip tip off and it was full right to the top. The juice was in here. And after about, you know, two minutes of standing it up, it all slowly flowed back in like a, an hourglass. So that tells you right there. It's a tight seal with this uh, top cap. There's an O-ring there keeping it all in. So I've emptied the whole thing into the top cap. There, it already started to go there. And it just flowed right back down, which is fantastic. It just didn't happen to leak out of here. I'm sure it would over time, though. Not much else to say. There's a million places to grab these. So if you've been interested in it, I highly recommend it. Just bear in mind it's a little bit big. So that's my review of the AGAT Stainless Steel Genesis Atomizer. I hope it uh, helped. If you have any questions, feel free to PM me, uh, email me, contact me on ECF, YouTube, wherever. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Vape Groovely, and I'll catch you later.